Hello, hello. As you might know by now, I really love crawling philodendron. And today we have yet another crawling philodendron. This time it's philodendron mamai. Just going to show you right here. Look at these um, beautiful silvery blotches on the upper side of the leaves. This is a philodendron mamai. As I mentioned in the beginning, it's a crawling philodendron. So that means that it's uh, crawling on the floor, on the ground, and also it will crawl in the pot and on the uh, potting medium or just slightly uh, below ground. A few important markers here. So as you see, this one is actually kind of climbing because uh, philodendron mamai can also climb. If you provide uh, a moss pole, it will also crawl or climb up the uh, moss pole. But uh, generally, I think as the bigger they get, the more they will just crawl on the floor. Let's talk about the care for philodendron mamai. Let's start with soil. In terms of soil, um, as always, philodendron prefer well-draining soil, and this is no exception for philodendron mamai. Uh, use chunky bits uh, such as peat, perlite, uh, orchid bark, these kind of substrates. Also charcoal. Charcoal is great actually because it's uh, going to remove uh, pollutants from the soil. It's also going to remove a uh, nasty smell in the soil. So if you have charcoal, it should be a little bit chunky, but chunky charcoal works really, really great within uh, a soil mix. You should also make sure that you have some organic matter in there because this will provide nutrients to philodendron mamae. So a little bit of potting uh, soil is fine, but not too much. The mix should be airy and well draining. You can check that by uh, watering. If you see water coming out of the pot within a couple of seconds, then you can be sure that it is well draining. I keep my philodendron mamai in Lechutza pond, which is a non-organic potting soil. It contains uh, volcanic stones, pebbles, uh, things like that, as well as slow release fertilizer. Let's move on to, uh, to light. Lighting, as you can see, the leaves are really green and um, they have some silvery plotches on it. This is like an indication of what kind of light these uh, plants need. Um, they grow in the Ecuadorian rainforest uh, in the understory. Outside light is much brighter than anything you can provide in your home. So uh, when you grow them at home, the best uh, choice is bright indirect light. Usually you get that from an east and west facing window. If you can, I prefer the uh, east facing window because this is where the sun goes up and also you will have a couple of hours of direct sunlight in the morning, which is uh, absolutely fine and great because the sunlight isn't that strong at that time. So a couple of hours of direct sunlight is fine, but you need to check the leaves and make sure they're not uh, burning because they're easily burned in direct sunlight. Let's talk about watering. So philodendron mamai loves um, humid soil, loves watering, but that doesn't mean that you should water it all the time. Like when you water, you should water it heavily, but you need to make sure that the water drains quite well. And if you have the right soil, that should be no problem. I uh, water my philodendron mamai about once a week. This is a general rule of thumb. Um, you should water more in spring and summer compared to autumn and winter, because spring and summer is the main growing season for philodendron mamai. So about once a week, I uh, check the soil. I mean, not with this pot. This is a bit special because it's a self-watering pot, but I check the soil and make sure that it's just slightly moist. This is when I water it uh, again. Uh, if it's still like wet, I'm not watering. I'm waiting a bit more until it almost dries out and then I water again. Because as mentioned, philodendron mamai loves uh, slightly humid soil and humidity in general. This brings me to the temperature. So um, the ideal temperature for philodendron mamai is 65 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This equals um, to 18 degrees uh, to 27 degrees uh, Celsius. Not a big issue. These are easy temperatures to provide in your um, regular home. The higher the temperature, the better, but don't try to get to the extremes. So um, this is all about uh, temperatures. Um, avoid the extremes and you will be completely fine. Also make sure that temperatures are not dropping too much uh, below 55 um, degrees Fahrenheit. 
below uh, 15 degrees Celsius, the um, Philodendron mammae is not growing really well anymore and uh, way below that uh, temperatures um, you will see uh, damage and the plant might uh, die. Humidity. Humidity is a, is a great uh, subject because, as I said, the Philodendron mammae is growing in the uh, rainforest, therefore they love uh, humid temperatures. Uh, I always say don't spray your plants and uh, this doesn't really work. You can't increase the um, environment humidity that way or even just for a short amount of time. And you're also risking that the leaves uh, stay too wet for too long and that would lead to rotting leaves and also a rotting plant in the long term. It's important that you have a great air circulation so the leaves can um, dry if you would spray them, but I don't recommend it. Keep plants closer together. This will increase the humidity in that area. And also you can use the, the pebble tray method where you put some water in a pebble tray and have some pebbles uh, underneath the, the pot. But also this will just slightly increase the humidity. The best you can do is uh, using a humidifier. But I know like humidifiers are not uh, that cheap and you might not be able to provide that in your home. But if you can and if you want optimal growth, uh, and increase uh, humidity that works great for bigger leaves. Um, it helps the plant to support bigger leaves. So yeah, humidity is important. Um, ideal for philodendron mammae is a humidity above uh, 60%. But as said, it's no big issue if you can't provide that even 40% would be okay. Um, it's, it's still growing, it's not dying, but you might see some uh, crispy leaves maybe if you go uh, under that. Uh, but you can certainly also acclimate um, the plant to lower humidity levels. Propagation, um, well, this is a great plant to uh, propagate. Actually, this uh, is a propagation of a much bigger mammae plant I have in my care. As they are uh, crawling, the stem is crawling on the ground. And what you can do is uh, you just snip off sections with nodes. Usually the nodes are there um, where the roots are. I'm trying to show you here. They're close by. This is, are like the bulky sections are um, usually uh, where the nodes are and you just uh, need to make sure that you have at least one node when you propagate philodendron mammae. And the great thing is that as they crawl and uh, grow they will also set their roots into the ground so in most cases when you cut the plant you will already have roots and philodendron mammae is then much easier to, uh, to propagate that way because you don't have to wait for root growth. Of course, there will be additional root growth, but it will continue to grow leaves uh, within three to four weeks and also uh, roots in, in general. Best season, of course, is spring and summer when the temperatures are warmer and there's more intense sunlight. Um, your house plants will propagate better, but that doesn't mean you cannot try it in autumn and winter. It might also work. Chances of success are maybe a little bit lower, but you can still do it there. It's just important to uh, provide a heat map and a humid environment for the cuttings to grow into new plants. Growth, in terms of growth, in the beginning I already said it's a climbing philodendron that likes to climb sometimes. You can also provide a totem in terms of a sphagnum moss pole, which is the best, but you can any pole that supports the plant will, will do. I personally do not like them to uh, climb, but this one is climbing anyways. I, I didn't encourage it to climb, but I think the bigger it will get, um, it will settle down. Because bigger leaves need support, so um, it's great uh, if your philodendron mammae is uh, able to root into something, so uh, into the substrate or into a pole, because then it has the support to grow uh, bigger leaves and mature and this is what ultimately most of you and also certainly me uh, want. All right, let's talk about potting. So crawling philodendron need different pots. Round and small round pots usually do not work that well because these climbers are quite uh, quick and will quickly grow out of the pot or if they stay within the pot they might uh, circle in the pot. So the longer and narrower the pot is, the better, because they can be quite narrow. You will just have the main stem um, growing along the pot. So long and narrow pots work great, as uh, this one, it can almost not be uh, too long, because they will crawl quite a distance, I must say. And if you can provide like a really long pot, you have a bigger chance of getting really, really big and great leaves. 
because philodendron mammae is able to grow huge leaves and um, this is really the fun part when growing this house plant well what else can i tell you about philodendron mammae pests probably let's talk about pests for a second as most philodendron and also monstera plants pests is a common issue i had on this plant uh, thrips Trips are always difficult to get rid of. You can use the neem oil method where you just apply a water and neem oil mix on the uh, foliage and also the stems of the philodendron marmite to try to get rid of the um, thrips and general uh, pests. What works for me usually is a mix of diluted alcohol, diluted dishwater soap and water. So I do a mix. I put it in a um, spraying can and then I spray the leaves and also the soil and the stems of the um, house plant. And I do that every couple of days once I have seen some uh, pests on the plants. And I do this for um, several weeks and months. And sometimes they go away, sometimes uh, they don't. So it's really difficult. The best thing you can do is just to really check your uh, philodendron mammae every time you water it or even in between you just have a look at the upper and underside of the leaves mostly uh, pests are going to be on the underside of the leaves but they can also be in the soil and uh, on the stems so check your mammae regularly what works absolutely best are beneficial nematodes so these are other crawlers and, and small little bugs that kill uh, specific uh, houseplant pests and for every Houseplant pests, there's like a um, certain beneficial nematode that is going to eat and destroy these uh, pests. So the best thing is to, to just look up the uh, beneficial nematode depending on the pest you have on your houseplants. Not have any houseplant pests is almost impossible. There's not many things you can do. Usually uh, houseplant pests like dry and humid conditions and will show up more in, in summer, but there's also others that prefer humidity and uh, really humid conditions so there's no uh, general rule of thumb here this is the philodendron mammae leaf with the silvery plotches it has a really deep uh, raining it's almost bullet um, the leaf uh, structure it's not very even on the uh, back side you have red veining you also have uh, ruffles on the stem at, at the top just a really really beautiful and good looking uh, house plant Thank you so much for watching. This was another houseplant uh, care video. I really hope you like these videos. If you could, please subscribe to our channel and also like this uh, video. And if you have any questions or comments, please put that in the comment section. We greatly appreciate that. And we love doing these videos for you. It's such a fantastic community. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.